Hi, this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. In this week's guitar lesson, we have a standalone blues. These are always my favorite to play. I can sit around the house and do this stuff for hours. You don't need a jam track. You don't need anyone to play along with. You just grab a guitar. You can play this on electric or acoustic guitar and just jam along with yourself. And so we're going to break this down note for note. I'll show you how to do it, how to understand it, so that you can use this stuff when you improvise. So I've got this lesson split into two parts. In this video, we'll take a look at the first half. If you'd like to watch the second half and get the tablature and also access the on-screen tab viewer, which is interactive, you can get those things by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP345. All right, so we have another standalone blues composition. These are my favorite to play. This is what I, when I'm sitting around the house, just noodling on an acoustic or electric guitar. This is what I end up doing more than anything just because it's so satisfying for me to play this style. Now this is a lot different than what we've done the last two weeks where we played the chord changes. That's what we did last week which was EP344 and then the week before that EP343. We were playing off the same jam track and trying to follow those chord changes which means every time there's a new chord you're changing the scale or the chord position to try and match that. This is a different approach it's a lot more primitive uh, and, and simple, but it, it's uh, in some ways it's more emotional to play this way. You're, you're not having to worry about that stuff, so you can focus a little bit more on inflection and you know how long to hold a note, how to bend it, vibrato, and all of those things. And most of your blues guys would play this way. They would play in the key of the song. So in other words, we're going to be playing this song in the key of A. There's a 1, 4, 5 chord, an A, a D, and an E chord, but we're just going to be playing the A minor pentatonic scale for the most part. There's, when we come to the 5 chord, I do like to change uh, and, and play over, out of that 5 chord position. Uh, in fact, we start the song that way, but, um, but other than that, we're going to be staying in that minor pentatonic scale. So this will make sense as we go through it, and what's cool is at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to improvise in this style, or at least... Uh, that's my goal for you. Is to, even if it's a very simple way of doing it, it's incredibly rewarding. You can just sit around and just jam by yourself and it sounds really good. Alright, so we're playing this in the key of A. Uh, I'm playing on the uh, the Gibson ES-335 and I've got a little bit of overdrive in my sound. You know, I'm, I'm playing through the Kemper here, but you can use uh, uh, you know whatever amp you've got. Just dial in a little overdrive if you're trying to match this sound. It's not super heavy, but it's enough that if I hit it hard, it's you know it breaks up a little bit. I love that sound. Also, a little bit of reverb in there. So the way that I started this, the song's in the key of A, but I started on the five chord. So this is a little tip for you if you wanna if you're writing your own thing and you're trying to think how do you start something, start on the five chord. So in this case it'd be an E chord. But I played. I came up and did this, and so that's going from the six to the nine chord. So I started by hitting the open 6th string, or that low E string, and then I've just barred all three strings here on the 9th fret, slide it down to the 7th fret. I'm really only playing strings 3 and 1. And that's a great way to start a song, especially a blues song. Start on the 5 chord. And this, by the way, that's an E6 chord, and that's an E9 chord, and the way that you can easily remember that is to think of playing your E chord using the A chord shape out of cage. You can see I've got one finger on the 7th fret, one finger on the 9th fret. 9th fret, 7th fret, ah, right, okay, so that's how you can get that that kind of jazzy sounding, it's more sophisticated sounding blues, but that's how we started. Okay, then we go right to the 1 chord. And I started with this uh, this blues thing, I think that's a Lightning Hopkins thing, I'm not sure exactly where I've got it, but what I'm doing is I'm playing the open E string again, that low 6th string. I slide up to the 4th fret 6th string with my middle finger. And then I come up here and bar the first 4 strings on the 2nd fret, but I'm only playing strings 5 and 4, which is the bottom part of that A chord. It's the A power chord or the A5 chord. So that's, that's how we get into it. So it's... 
Now, once we're in, that's the one. So let's look at this. So we're going to keep that bar there uh, for the A chord. And then I'm going to put my middle finger down on the 3rd fret 5th string and do a hammer on to the 4th fret 5th string. And then we're going to play that 4th string which is behind the bar on the 2nd fret. Now watch this. What's happening here is I'm coming up to the 5th fret 4th string, pushing it a little bit sharp, back to the 2nd fret 3rd string, there's the 5th fret 3rd string, and then we come back to the 2nd fret 3rd string. So all together. Now what is this that's happening here uh, from, from a scale perspective? This would be pattern 5 of the minor pentatonic scale. And this is a, a, a section that I don't play in that often, or, or, or a, a pattern, I guess, out of the five patterns of the minor pentatonic scale. That's what it looks like. It's actually very easy to find because it's very symmetrical in terms of uh, the shape on the, on the neck. Uh, and it's right behind pattern 1 which is our home base usually. But this pattern five is really nice when you're playing out of this A chord shape because you've got you've got all this bluesy stuff that you can do by coming up here and bending in this position. And another little takeaway, a little uh, light bulb moment for some of you hopefully, is if uh, instead of coming up to the fifth fret, if I go to the fourth fret, I'm playing the A major pentatonic scale pattern one. Whoa, that could just blow your mind if you think about what that means. So you've got the minor pentatonic scale. If I reach up to the fifth fret, but if I come to this fourth fret, I've got the major pentatonic scale. That right there is worth the price of admission for this lesson. Just realizing that, that uh, in that one little uh, area, you can go from major to minor and you can get all kinds of combinations. All right, so let's back it up and play from that E chord at the beginning. Now after that, sounds like a lot, but it's not. We're just going into minor pentatonic scale pattern one. So after I came to that third, uh, sorry, second fret third string, I matched that same note by sliding up to the uh, seventh fret fourth string, and that puts me in position to be in minor pentatonic scale pattern one. So hopefully you realize then we were in pattern five, but then by matching that same note and sliding up into this position, now I'm in pattern one. This is sort of a lot easier, at least for me, once I'm in pattern one, I've got a lot more licks than I do in pattern five. So I can, I can play all this bluesy stuff, the Chuck Berry stuff, and all of that stuff lives in pattern one. Okay. So after that, we're gonna play. So that's the fifth fret, third string, seventh fret, fourth string with your ring finger, and then you're gonna go ahead and play strings two and three on the that seventh fret with that same finger. And then we're gonna go back to the fifth fret and we're gonna play strings two and three. So we have. And then back to the seventh fret fourth string. Middle finger comes down to the seventh fret fifth string. So let's just look at that little lick there. Notice the subtleties, the little bends there. It's subtle, but it makes a big difference. If you play it straight, it just sounds kind of flat. Uh, you know, it needs that that bend there. And then, so after that, that uh, seventh fret fifth string, we're gonna go to the fifth fret fourth string, and then we're gonna do a quick slide from seven to five on the fifth string, and then down to the third fret fifth string. So all together, it looks like that. So just practice that. If you're a premium member, you have access to the tablature. You can loop that section if you need to and slow down the tempo or whatever you've got to do. Now after that, and by the way, this these two notes are in that pattern one. I, this is just how I break down the patterns in the blues lead course, uh, which you have as a premium member. You have pattern one. 
but there's this little extension off of pattern one. So when I play pattern one, I always drop down into this little air section. Now some people consider that pattern five. It just depends on how you look at it. It's the same notes. It's just in how you group them. Um, okay. Now after that, we go to the four chord. So I'm just taking advantage of the open strings. This is why I'm doing this in the key of A, because now I have that open fourth string, which is your D. And it, this is gonna be the same thing we did over the, the one chord. Right? What we did over the A chord to start it, we're gonna do it here. So now we're borrowing the first three strings on the second fret, playing the fourth string. And there's your third fret fourth string with a hammer on with your ring finger to the fourth fret fourth string. So, so you have. And then you come up there to that uh, second fret third string. And then you have. Now what's happening here? There's different ways you can look at this. What I'm thinking about is I'm still just thinking of the key of the song. I'm not worrying about playing something over the D chord shape. At this point, I'm playing minor pentatonic scale uh, for A, the A minor pentatonic scale. And this would be pattern five. So it's a bend on the fifth fret third string. And then we're matching that note on the third fret second string. So you have. And then after that, I went. So that's just a walk down chromatically to uh, fifth fret, second string, fourth fret, third fret on the second string. And then we're gonna slide back into pattern one of that minor pentatonic scale. Now that's something I always do. You don't have to do this. Uh, just kind of always get back to where you're familiar. That's just a, a general rule. You've got everybody, no matter who you are, what style you play, you've got some little area of the neck that's home for you. And for me, it's that pattern one. So I'm always kind of, no matter what I do, I'm messing around, you know, in this area, that area, I'm always trying to get back home because that's where I can play the best, I guess, or I'm the most comfortable. So once I'm in home, I, I come up to that seventh fret, third string, fifth fret, four, uh, fifth fret, third string, seventh fret, fourth string. Okay, let's take it from when we, when we go to the D chord. We have. Then after that, I just walked right down minor pentatonic scale pattern one. And a lot of this will be repeating what we just played. So that's that uh, fifth fret uh, strings two and three. And then we come to the seventh fret fourth string, seventh fret fifth string. Fifth fret fourth string. And then a quick slide down to the fifth fret fifth string. Third fret fifth string. So just repeat that over and over again. That's a great rock blues lick. You can use that in everything. And then at the end of that, we go back to the fifth string, which is our A note. So we just played over the four chord, and now we're back to the one chord. Let's back it up from the beginning and play up to that point. Put everything in context. chord. It's already making sense. So you can already feel the formula. Even without a jam track, without a bass player, any accompaniment, you're defining the notes by hitting those open strings. That's why I'm playing this in the key of A. Okay, so after we get back to the A, it's the same thing we did the first time. The difference is that time, I landed on the E note, which is because we're going to the E, the five chord. So that would be that second fret, fourth string. So when we go to the A, it's. We play that bend there, fifth fret, fourth string, second fret, uh, third string, and then back to the fifth fret, fourth string. Now we're coming to the E part, and then watch this. I'm gonna hit the low E 
as well. So now you've got the two E's that are an octave apart. So after that low E is ringing out, it gives me a little chance to take my hand off the fretboard and reposition it because the note is ringing out. And so what I'm going to do there is I'm going to put my middle finger on the third fret, uh, third string, and I'm going to do a slide up to the fourth fret, third string. And then with my ring finger on my right hand, I'm going to grab the one string, the open E string. Now you could pick that, you don't have to hybrid pick if you want, but I find it easier to hybrid pick that. And then after that I'm going to slide back down to the uh, second fret third string, open third string, second fret fourth string. And then we're going to hit the low E and the high E. So all together that E part goes. Sounds like that. Now some of you are saying, wait a minute, hold on, I got I can play the notes, but what is that? Is that minor pentatonic? You know, well, okay, so I lied when I said we're not gonna play the chord changes. In this one spot, I did uh, switch to the five chord. I was thinking E chord. Since it was I was down here in that territory anyway, I'm picturing the E chord shape. And so I was thinking about all those E uh, blues licks. So this was just that would be like pattern two of the E minor pentatonic scale. So I changed scales in that one spot. And a lot of times that happens in blues where you stay on the one and four chord. You just stay in, in uh, the key of the song. But then when it comes to the five chord, you switch just for that one chord. And then you go back. So that's kind of what's happening here. All right, so there's one note I forgot to mention. I'm trying to be as precise as I can with this stuff. It's just the high E, and that's when we transition from the A chord to the E chord. So it goes like this. There's the E in the middle, low E, and then there's the high E. I forgot to mention that high E. And then after that, while that's ringing out, my middle finger, third fret, third string. Play that little lick out, out of that E chord shape. And then we come back to the A, just like we did for the, the intro. And then there's the turnaround, which is an intro or a turnaround you've heard Muddy Waters do in Muddy Waters songs. I think of ZZ Top, it's, it's in a lot of stuff. Um, and the way that I'm playing that is I've got my ring finger on the 5th fret 1st string, my middle finger is on the 5th fret 4th string, and I'm going to pick the 4th string, I'm going to use my ring finger to pluck the 1st string. It's not that difficult. We're just going to walk it down. So there's the 5th fret, 4th fret, 3rd fret, and then we come down to the 2nd fret with my index finger. And then when I come down here, I'm going to play the open E string along with this E note. Just two E's an octave apart. If you like that sound uh, of that turnaround, look at where that is. Now remember that we're in the key of A, so that's an A turnaround. Picture your A major bar chord where you bar on the 5th fret. Ah, the 5th fret, that's where that lick starts. So now if I said, if you wanted to do it in the key of B, you find your B chord using that chord shape. You're now you're not going to be able to hit the open string like you could with, with, with the A. But you can do something like that. Um, so that's how you can use that turnaround in anything going forward. Okay, so after that walk down. There's the turnaround chord, the 5 chord. And I'm playing an E7 chord. But I'm just playing strings 5, 4, and 3. That little uh, triad there, that looks like the D7 chord shape that you'd play in first position. Same shape or same fingering, but we're playing it up here, which makes it an E7. So I've got my middle finger on the 7th fret 5th string. My index finger is on the 6th fret 4th string, and my ring finger is on the 7th fret 3rd string. And I just went back and forth. It's a great way to play that chord. Now I'm going to end this lesson there. That's a lot of information and uh, uh, that'll give you something that you can practice already. Now if you're a premium member, you can move on and we'll learn the whole second half, but we'll save that for the part two video. Let me back up and play through this one more time and then I'll see you in part two. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, click the subscribe button, click the alert bell so you can be alerted when I put out new lessons. I do new lessons every week 
I've been doing it for many years. Every Friday there's something new, and there are these deep dive looks at the guitar and how to improvise and how to sit in and play with other people and sit around the house and just jam by yourself. That's really what this is all about. All right, so here's part one, and then we'll see in part two.